Hi, I'm Ben Felder with The Oklahoman, and it's been somewhat of a transformative last several months for public education here in Oklahoma, and joining me today to talk about some of those issues is State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister. Superintendent, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks. It's great to be with you, Ben. Yeah, oh, a lot that we could talk about. I want to run through a few things that have happened over the last several months, particularly as we're winding down another legislative session. Uh, one of the aspects of this year's session was the passage of, of a bill that changes the end of the year instructions. Uh, the tests that uh, students are required to take at the end of the year um, are going to be done away with and uh, there will be new assessments at the end of the year now um, starting in the uh, 2017 school year. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what this change means for public schools here in Oklahoma. Well, it is an important step in getting to a better place, one that is focused more on instruction, reducing the time spent focused on just a test score and checking something off a list of graduation requirements, where in the EOIs you actually had permission to forget because it was really focused on a skill just at the end of a semester. Yeah. What we want to move to is high value assessment tool that doesn't take as much time and actually requires a cumulative knowledge base and competencies in high school all at once. Uh, more similar to like the ACT. Yeah. Four subject content areas delivered all at one time in the spring of the 10th grade year that measure the standards and we have new standards this year, so we would be ready to go with that in the spring. That's for the transition year. But it also includes an opportunity for students to take the ACT in the 11th grade, which is an extension of the pilot we started this year for all Oklahoma okay. students in their 11th grade year. Yeah, so currently it's uh, a high school student has to pass, is it four or seven? Uh, That's right. Tests. So they have to take seven end of instruction exams, and that actually starts in the fall. Uh, and it's delivered multiple times throughout the mm. year because it, this is a civil rights issue once you've tied it to graduation mm. uh, requirements. So then you have this constant um, window of testing in Oklahoma high schools that have semesters, trimesters, block schedules, then makeup tests within that uh, semester or unit of study. Uh, it is a continuous process that starts mm. in the fall and uh, concludes at the end of June every year. We want to shift that focus to assessments that have value after high school yeah. and that have the ability to give a predictive score on a college or career readiness tool like the ACT or SAT. And this is, I think, just a smarter uh, way to go about the assessment that will really help us have comparability with yeah. other states, other students, and then I think we have a better chance of having good information so we can make good decisions and yeah. lift education outcomes. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk from parents and teachers about all the tests that students are having to yeah. take. Uh, high stake testing has been something that's been talked about for, for a while now. Um, how would this reduce that prep time towards tests? What would this mean in the classroom in terms of time spent yeah. uh, for teachers and students? Well, the focus is going to shift off of a content area teacher just focusing on her students in a semester. And it's going to shift to school-wide mm. accountability. Did you help students with the big picture and move them as a group all the way to graduation with retained knowledge where you really have to have momentum and mastery of skill? Um, that, that's the shift and we want to shift also to each student having an individual academic plan. And that needs to really drop down into middle school mm -hmm. so that we are really thinking in terms of being prepared, closing the gap for, with remediation rates that have remained uh, wide, too wide, yeah. uh, when kids go off to college or into the career tech path seeking high skill, high um, demand industry certification. Yeah. So we will shift this by starting first in elementary school, middle school and high school, mm -hmm. reducing testing at all of those levels. The bill does more than just reducing EOIs. Yeah. Will this have any impact on the, the A through F grades that schools are assigned throughout Oklahoma? Uh, it's kind of a controversial system. Uh, you know, the school is, is, is ranked these letter grades. How will this impact that at all? Yes, it will. Okay. And in fact, it, within the law, it would give an opportunity, which is something that we, we must do. So it's kind of the state also um, becoming in sync with the requirements of the new federal law called ESSA, which mm -hmm. was the repeal of No Child Left Behind. 
uh, that requires that we go out to the to stakeholders in communities all across the state and seek information, listen, and this all needs to be around school accountability. So our A through F grading system. And then uh, we will do that through the summer and we, by the time we're at the end of October and into the fall, we need to have that plan finalized and then presented to the State Board of Education and then it will go to the legislature in the next legislative session. So the plan is for this to be fully implemented for the 17-18 school year? Uh, uh, for, yes, for the 17-18 school year, that would be the first year of implementation. Okay. Now you brought up the new federal policy towards education, ESSO, which is mm -hmm. replacing the No Child Left Behind Act. Uh, just what are, your, what are your thoughts on this? It was back in December that President Obama signed this into law. Uh, what kind of impact is this going to have on, on Oklahoma schools? This is very important piece of actually um, Republican leadership in the House and Senate at the federal level who really pushed to uh, really strip away some of the federal mandates that were coming mm -hmm. out of the Obama administration. And we fought very hard with our federal delegation to bring back states' rights um, when it came to education. You know, education in Oklahoma is a constitutional responsibility. It's also a moral responsibility. Uh, but those decisions need to be made closest to students. When we make those decisions locally, we know our students best at the local level, and we have the best opportunity to serve them most appropriately. So this provides for that kind of flexibility, and it was sorely needed. Yeah. You know, this year in schools, um, the big story was mid-year budget reductions, millions yes. in cuts. Uh, we've seen teacher layoffs, school years, uh, our school years shortened by days. Some districts have gone to four-day-a-week school years. Um, the budget, as we speak, has been approved by the Senate. It's still being awaited uh, approval at the House. So we're not really sure what the end product will be. But this budget um, holds education harmless, at least based on the end-of-the-year um, appropriation. So still a little bit of a cut from last year's. Um, appropriations. Now you refer to this as kind of a, a best case scenario. A lot of teachers and educators are out there are still pretty frustrated with the funding yes. levels. Now, talk about why this is a best case scenario, but where, where do we still need to, to see improvement in the budget? Okay, and, and this is a very good uh, question because we need to be able to talk about the budget mm -hmm. that is appropriated by the legislature. So to talk only about that right now, uh, in a time when it was very clear that the uh, legislature did not have an interest or appetite for passing some kind of revenue enhancement mm -hmm. uh, measure, then this is the best scenario. To be held flat at our May numbers, um, fiscally you know, held flat. Now, that, with that, you have to understand that we, there are other funding streams that schools rely on to keep their doors open, and those are some of the local dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, those are often tied more even so than the appropriated dollars to the uh, gross production and the economy of course. So we are seeing those coming in under where we would have had um, projections earlier in, yeah. in before the economic downturn. Um, so there will be need for great caution. I don't see any of our local school districts changing the plans that they have already made mm -hmm. with a particular employment decisions uh, or the cutting of programs. We are tightening our belt and also preparing for um, uncertain times. Yeah. We don't know what will happen in the next um, school year. And so I think you will see districts that had to dip in to their reserves um, try to be very conservative so that they don't find themselves uh, flat-footed or in much, much more dire conditions where there is no cushion. They have depleted yeah. those savings. So there's certainly not going to be any district in Oklahoma that is going to be offering more for students next year. And, and that is very sad. Yeah. I mean, I understand the kind of muted, um, not celebration, but at least acceptance of the budget, given the fact that we heard um, that it could be worse. Yeah. Um, and, and some districts were preparing for, for, for bigger cuts. It still hurts. But moving forward, you mm -hmm. talk about that, that inability for the legislature to find some kind of revenue enhancer. Going forward, though, are, are we going to have to see some kind of um, you know, comprehensive reform to the way education is funded, correct? Or, I mean, is, or is this something that we, I mean, going on next year, if we're, if we're hold, hold flat as our student uh, population continues to increase, I mean, that can't be good for our, our, our school system. Well, well, you're correct. We have a growing 
student population, and that population has greater needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're more expensive to, to serve uh, because their needs are obviously greater and will require greater resources. Uh, and you do that with fewer teachers because we still are in the midst of a teacher shortage, a really record teacher shortage. So that still has to be solved. And uh, we're going to have to find a way uh, and there is resolve, I believe, uh, to make certain that we meet the needs of the school kids of Oklahoma. The most important person in that schoolhouse is the teacher. The most important person to the student, though, is the family and their parents. Parents are a child's first teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, we will need to do everything we can to get parents more engaged, but where we don't have those parents that can be engaged, whether that is due to uh, incarceration, um, health issues, mental health issues, addiction uh, issues, we have the need for a community to step up in those local areas of where we have greater needs. And we are starting to see that, and we have had a history of trying to pull together as a state to meet those kinds of needs, bridge those um, opportunities that kids have to have to be successful. But we appreciate that the context that our budget was written is one that caused others mm -hmm. to be cut severely. And we are grateful for every dollar that was appropriated for common education. Yeah, uh, you know, finally, you know, a very turbulent time in schools right now. Uh, you know, we see that on, on social media. We've seen that at the Capitol rallies. Uh, we've even seen, uh, you know, students yes. uh, protesting at schools. Uh, you know, you spend a lot of time talking with teachers and administrators mm -hmm. and, and, in, and in classrooms. Um, what? What are you getting, what are you hearing from that community, and, and where do you think education in Oklahoma is headed, um, you know, not just in the next months, but in the next years as we kind of look for, um, you know, a more permanent solution to a lot of the challenges that we're facing in our schools? Well, I think that we have something very positive happening, and that's more and more of an awareness of the needs and challenges. We have both immediate needs and lingering challenges. Um, we can't solve all of that quickly over a few months. It's going to take some real um, in-depth planning, mm -hmm. and that's going to require community members understanding the needs and what it takes to step up and meet those needs. So we applaud anyone who wants to be a part of the solution and engage in conversation, um, committing maybe an hour a week uh, to volunteer in a school, or even uh, you know something as simple as just making a phone call to um, to a legislator or uh, to you know help with the school in very small ways and big ways. There there is a place for everyone who cares. So I think this is all positive. And part of that though is um, I think there's a need, a great need that we are operating with good information so that people are reacting to facts not anecdotal information uh, solely. And, and that is some of the work that I still need to do with our community advisory groups. All throughout the summer, we're going to be engaging with teachers, uh, leaders in business and industry, um, those who are business owners on Main Street, as well as those who have been veteran teachers or brand new teachers that are alternatively certified and did not have a teacher residency program to observe how a um, successful teacher manages uh, classrooms with a variety of students of various needs. So there, there's a lot of room for professional development as well as community uh, engagement. And we're going to be doing everything we can to promote uh, awareness of how people can get involved. And then I think there will be, uh, uh, certainly as the elections are coming up, yeah. people are talking about education. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of things taking place in the world of public schools in Oklahoma, law, our changes in our testing. Uh, new federal uh, policy, and, and then of course uh, the budget and, and funding issues as we move forward. And Superintendent, we appreciate your time for, you. for spending some time and, and sharing a little bit of that insight with us. Thanks so much. Thank you.